Welcome back to the Blue Chip Breakdown, Vols fans. I'm your host, Bull. In today's video, we will be updating you on everything that has to do with the transfer portal for Tennessee. We're also going to take a look at the 2024 schedule that was just released last night. Uh, we're going to kind of talk about some of the matchups, not too far in depth, but I want to see what our record could possibly look like coming out of that 2024 season and will it be good enough for Tennessee to make it into the playoffs. All right, so we know that Tennessee in the transfer portal is targeting secondary tight ends and the defensive line. So every day we'll just kind of go through and talk about each of those position groups and update each one uh, with information that we have, uh, you know, from the previous day. So we're gonna start off with the tight ends, okay? And Bauer Sharp, he is the tight end from Southeast Louisiana, okay? And he was supposed to be visiting Tennessee this weekend but he is not going to be visiting us at this point. Don't know exactly what happened, but he will be visiting, I believe, Oklahoma State. So that's very, very interesting. Is that a guy that maybe the coaching staff withdrew their offer from? Or is he looking elsewhere? I think that there is a little bit of cause for concern there, at least until we can get in someone at the tight end position. And hopefully we'll get some good news on that at some point, uh, you know, throughout the rest of this week or over the weekend. All right, now for that defensive line, we've talked a lot about Fidel Diggs, and uh, it sounds like he will not be visiting Tennessee until possibly January. So he's going to be visiting Syracuse uh, and Alabama first. And if he doesn't commit to one of those teams, then he will visit Tennessee uh, in January. So that one's not looking good. I'm just going to call it like I see it. It does not look good for Tennessee in that one. Sounds like, um, you know, if I had to pick a school, I would say that Syracuse is probably where he's going to end up. Next guy is Dominic McKinley. Okay, so that is the five-star defensive lineman in the 2024 class that's currently committed to Texas A&M. So everyone's trying to get in on him. Good news is we did get him locked in for an official visit January the 20th. Uh, and, you know, like we kind of talked about, this is a guy that probably will not make a decision until the final signing day, which is in February. So we still have some time to kind of gain some ground. I actually think that that, it, you know, works well for Tennessee because we kind of got in on him a little bit late. So, you know, hopefully we can close out on him. And, uh, you know, it does sound like Tennessee is one of his favorites at this point. Okay, it sounds like things are kind of going well with that. It would honestly be better for us to get in, you know, especially a guy like that that could potentially be playing a defensive tackle for us in the 2024 class as opposed to kind of having to overpay for a guy that you can only have on your roster for maybe one to two seasons. I do think that it would be cool to kind of get both. But the way that this roster is set up right now, I think that we're probably okay with our guys starting at defensive tackle. All right, and now for that secondary, okay? I'm very, very excited about this, right? So first thing is first, man, I got to watch two of our 2025 commits last night in the Georgia State title game, Milton versus Walton. It was a really, really good game for those of y'all who missed it. But, uh, you know, we got to see Ty Redmond, okay? He had a phenomenal game. He played great in the state championship game. We also got to see Dylan Lewis. Now, I'm not quite sure what's going on with Shamar Arno. If he changed his number or, you know, maybe he got hurt earlier in the season, but I didn't really see him at all. And I haven't seen much of him in any of the Milton games this season. So hopefully everything is okay there. But out of the two players that I did see, I really like what I saw. I'll probably end up doing an entire film breakdown just talking about those two players in the state championship game. But they are both state champions, so it's going to be great to uh, you know bring that championship mindset to this roster. Always want to have some guys in that know how to win. Those two guys in 2025 are going to be really, really good corners. And uh, something for us to look forward to uh, you know, as we're kind of talking about these secondary pieces. But the first guy that I want to talk about, uh, this is a new target for this for this team, for the staff, and that's Trey Jones, okay? He is from Central Michigan, okay? Six foot two, 215 pounds. He had 66 tackles, two pass breakups, one forced fumble, and one interception. Uh, and, you know, this is a guy, man, that I really, really love, right? So we've talked so much about some of our targets, especially at safety, not being physical. Um, and he's nothing like that. He's a very, very physical football player. He's, he's even so physical that I would say that he could potentially play linebacker, right? If he could gain 10 to 15 pounds, that's a guy that could play linebacker for us. And, you know, we talked about how are we going to replace T-Mac? You know, how are we going to find a guy that's six foot two, 220 pounds that can, you know, play physical football, that can also cover? Well, it looks like this staff did a great job of finding him. So hopefully we can close in on him. I believe that Tennessee has offered him. Not quite sure if there's any visits set up, but... That's the type of a guy that we need to be recruiting very, very, very hard in this transfer portal. And if you have to, you know, kind of like pay him a little bit more, I would. Now, he's not the best in coverage playing safety. 
And I think that that's just because he kind of tends to let, you know, some wide receivers eat up on his cushion uh, and beat him deep sometimes. But, you know, again, if you move him to the star position, he's not going to have to deal with that as much. He's going to be playing a completely different form of coverage, and it's not going to be as much of the backpedal deal. And I also think that that's something that you can kind of coach him out of. So I like him either at safety or, you know, or at star, but I like him a lot more at star. All right, next guy is D.C. Richardson, okay? He's from Mississippi State, 6'2", 195-pound cornerback. He is a senior, so if we get him, it would only be for one season, but I absolutely love his game. He is an immediate starter on probably any roster. Now, with him being a senior, uh, and you know, with the idea of him getting into that transfer portal, I'm a little bit curious as to why he's not going pro. That just doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me because from, you know, the little bit of what I've seen from his film, he's a guy that definitely could get drafted, you know, so just trying to make some more money and maybe improve his draft stock some more. Maybe he's heard from some of these, uh, you know, scouts and uh, from his agent that his draft grade is not as high as he wanted it to be. That's a little bit mind boggling uh, to me. But, you know, again, from what I've seen on film, he's beautiful in coverage. He actually looks a lot like what I think Ty Redman is going to look like, um, you know, once he kind of, you know, gets a little bit older, once he gets on campus, once he learns how to play in the SEC. He's a long guy, okay? He's got long arms, physical at the line of scrimmage. You know, he can play bump and run coverage. He can play man coverage. He's good in zone. Comes up, very willing to tackle, likes to lay that thump. I mean, I would love to be able to get him. How realistic is it? Not quite sure. I believe that he is still visiting Oregon right now. Oregon's the team that we're constantly talking about in this transfer portal. They are going to be in on pretty much all of these good players, and we all know that they're going to be throwing a lot of money at these guys. So can Tennessee close with Mr. Richardson? He's a guy that obviously we are targeting. No clue yet if any visit has been set up, you know, at least at the time that we are recording this video. I haven't heard anything about a visit being set up, but expect for one to be. And uh, if we can do that, that would be great. So he's a guy that I would love to be able to add to this roster just because, like I said, he will immediately, immediately raise the uh, grade of your entire defense, but in particular, especially that secondary. All right, so we're also getting news that Devin Marshall will be visiting Tennessee this weekend, okay? So that's the safety from Villanova. Wasn't very high on his film, but obviously the staff sees something in him that I did not. Again, you know, I did not watch a whole lot of his film, but from the little bits that I saw, that was a guy that I would not want to touch. But, you know, again, I'm going to put all my trust in the staff uh, and, you know, hope that they've got some sort of a plan with him and, uh, you know, hope that that visit goes well. Next guy is Jacoby Thomas. Now, I'm very excited about this young man. He's a six foot, 290 pound safety from Middle Tennessee State. He had 71 tackles last season and one forced fumble. And the season before that, he had four interceptions. So this is a sophomore, so this is a younger player. He would come in, I believe, with two more years left to be able to play for us. He actually said that Tennessee was his dream school. So, you know, I know that some of y'all are looking and saying, oh man, he's from Middle Tennessee State, so he's prob probably not that good. Watched his film. I'm probably the most excited about him out of any of the secondary players that we've seen throughout this entire cycle. And he does it all. You know, he's a guy that is physical in run support, and he has really, really good coverage. And I believe that his cover skills can even improve from what it was last season. He's got the proper skill set that, you know, you can get his technique down just a little bit better, and then he grows exponentially. He's got the good length, everything that you want. This is a guy that I would want to see playing safety for sure, uh, because, you know, again, he's going to play well inside of that box. He's a little bit, where well, he's not a little bit, I think he's a lot better as a, you know, uh, center of the field guy than what we see out of Trey Jones. So if you could put Trey Jones up into the box at star and then put this young man behind him at safety, you know, along with a guy like John Slaughter, some of the others that we've got on this roster, that's gonna be a, a huge upgrade, I think, in this secondary and for this defense. So, you know, again, he is very, very physical in run support. I've actually seen him beat, you know, two and three blocks and kind of scraping over like a linebacker type uh, and making plays. So, you know, this is a guy that we most definitely want, and I hope that we can close out on him. Ball fans, that's one to be very, very excited about. If that is the first commit that we get in this transfer portal, that's a really, really big one. So, you know, going to keep a very close eye out on this one. Sounds like he is going to be visiting Tennessee, I believe, this weekend. So we'll have a whole lot more news on that as it rolls out for us. All right, now let's get into the 2024 schedule. All right, start off with August the 31st. We've got UT Chattanooga coming to Knoxville. This is a game that we definitely expect for Nico and everybody else to ball out in. I want to see some of those true freshmen get out. Let's not make the same mistakes in 2024 that we made in 2023. 
get these guys out early, you know, early on in the season. And I think early on in this game, can we put it away early? You know, can we put the game away? You know, I'd say middle, middle midway through the second quarter. If we can, let's get these young guys in as quickly as possible and get them some experience because we're going to need to build up the depth as much as possible on this team. Let's go on to the next week. All right, now the next game is September the 7th versus NC State. The game is in Charlotte. Uh, as y'all can see right here, this is Tennessee's 2023 total offense ranking. This is their total defense ranking. And I'll be talking about the teams, uh, you know, in the matchups, what their total offense and defensive rankings are as well. So NC State is coming off of having the number 96 total ranked offense and the number 25th total ranked defense. I think that this is a game that Tennessee should be able to win. Now, it is in Charlotte, so it's kind of a home game for NC State. And, you know, they've got a pretty solid football team. But I fully expect for, you know, if Tennessee gets back their entire offensive line, right, if we get back our entire, uh, you know, defensive line and all that good stuff, if we close out well in the portal, uh, in the secondary, if we can get another guy at wide receiver, that's what I am expecting whenever I'm going through all of these games. So just keep that in mind as well. But I think that Tennessee can definitely win this one. Um, you know, we've got a lot of veteran experience. And I think that we kind of got, you know, more, uh, you know, better athletes, I would say. You know, we've got some better athletes uh, this season, and we should be able to make a whole lot of plays. So I'm excited for Tennessee to win this game. Next one is September the 14th versus Kent State. Kent State had the number 129th ranked offense and the number 81st ranked defense. I think, you know, obviously this is another game that Tennessee should be able to get some of those young guys in early. I think the Tennessee rolls in that one. Big matchup right here, September the 21st at Oklahoma, okay? Oklahoma's coming off of having the number 5th ranked offense and number 79th ranked defense. They will also have played Temple, Houston, and Tulane right before they play us. We all know that this is Josh Heupel's alma mater. It's going to mean a whole lot to him. I think he coaches well in this game. And, you know, I think that Oklahoma is going to be a battle-tested team. I could see them losing to one of these three teams in Temple, Houston, or Tulane. Coming into this one, if that happens, obviously this is going to be a huge, huge game for them to want to win their first SEC game in the SEC. Um, and, you know, I think that Tennessee is going to want to win it a lot, too. So it's going to probably be the game of the week, the matchup of the week. Uh, but I do have Tennessee winning this one. I think that we can go to Oklahoma and win this game. So I've got us undefeated up to this point. But, you know, there's a caveat to this. You know, I think there's, I would say maybe right now as everything sits, I would give Oklahoma about a, I'd say a 30% chance to win this one. So I'm 70% confident in Tennessee winning this one. Next week, September the 28th, is a bye week. So some games that we can watch this week uh, will be Alabama versus Georgia, okay? That's going to be a big one. The game is in Tuscaloosa. And then we've got Oklahoma at Auburn. I think that Auburn is going to be a really, really good team in the 2024 season. Expect for Auburn to close well in that transfer portal. Expect some flips in the 2024 class as well. And, uh, you know, I think that they will have enough talent that they, you know, could and should have a much more productive offense and defense next season. So that's going to be a really big matchup. Now, October the 5th, okay, we are going to Arkansas. Arkansas had the number 106 ranked offense and the number 48th ranked defense in 2023. They will be coming off of games at Auburn, okay, and versus Texas A&M. I expect them to be a little bit beat up. Now, we know that Arkansas's offense wasn't great in 2023, but Coach Bobby P is coming back to Arkansas. Didn't love his offense at Texas A&M that much, but maybe he kind of like learned from his mistakes and he can get the offense going there, uh, you know, in Arkansas. But again, this is a game that I think the Tennessee should definitely be able to win, okay? I give Tennessee about, I would say a 75% chance of winning this one. I'm about, you know, 75% confident in this one. So, next week, okay, we go back to Knoxville, October the 12th. We've got the Florida Gators coming to town. They're coming off of having the number 48th ranked offense and, and the number 68th ranked defense. And coming into this game, they will have played versus Miami, Sanford, Texas A&M, at Mississippi State, and then they had to play Central Florida. So, out of all those games, it looks like there's really only one that is a surefire win. They could potentially be, what? what is that, one in three, one in four, or something like that, uh, coming into Neyland, right? That would be absolutely horrific. I think that, you know, with Florida having the toughest schedule in the entire, uh, you know, in all of college football next season, I think that um, they're about to implode. You know, I could see them having an even worse season next season than they did this season. I expect for Tennessee to absolutely dominate in that one. That's a game that I want to win by like 35 or more points, man. Like, let's run it up on Florida in that game. In the following week, okay, it's the third Saturday in October. October the 19th, we're playing Alabama. They're coming to Neyland 
They're coming off of having the number 53rd ranked offense and the number 18th ranked defense. They will have played UGA on September the 28th. We talked about that game uh, at Vanderbilt and versus South Carolina. So their schedule is actually pretty light before they get to see us. That's going to be a tough one. I think that Alabama is going to be an even stronger team next season than they were in 2023. Can Tennessee pull it off? This is the game that, you know, I talked about this before. I think that this is where we see what Nico is made of. You know, what is this team going to be made of? It's going to be a very, very tough, very physical football game. Um, And this is, you know, I'm about 50-50 on this one. You know, I always want to pick my volunteers, but if there is a game that I can see us losing, it would be this one right here versus Alabama. Following week is October the 26th, and we have a bye. Some games that we've been watching this bye week are Missouri versus Alabama. The game is at Alabama. Really want to see Alabama put it on Mizzou. You know, I hate both of those teams, but I hate drinking his whole bunch and, you know, their overconfident fan base so much right now. So I would love to see them go down to Tuscaloosa and get absolutely smacked. Uh, another game is Oklahoma at Ole Miss. That's going to be a really good one. LSU at Texas A&M as well. So those are some games that we can kind of pay attention to in that bye week. A uh, couple of teams that we may end up having to face in the playoffs for some reason or for any reason. We don't know how things are going to shape up. Um, so, you know, it'll be very interesting to see how those games play out that week. All right. And the November the second week, we've got Kentucky coming to Knoxville. Kentucky had the number 98th ranked offense and the number 43rd ranked defense. They're going to be coming off games at Florida and versus Auburn. Like I said earlier, I think the Auburn's going to be a very, very good football team. So, you know, we'll see how, uh, you know, we'll see how Kentucky can come off of that loss because I'm fully expecting for them to lose. Uh, you know, again, we don't know how the transfer portal thing is all going to shake out. But, you know, it feels like Dingo will be playing for Tennessee. So that will be a big game, obviously, him playing versus the team that he uh, played for in previous seasons. So I guess that would be a cool storyline right there. But I've got Tennessee winning this game pretty big at home versus Kentucky. Now, next game is November the 9th. Okay, this is versus Mississippi State. It's also in Neyland. Mississippi State had the number 102nd ranked offense and the number 41st ranked defense. And they'll be coming off of games at Texas, then a bye week, then at UGA, then Texas A&M, and then Arkansas. So they've got a tough schedule. They're probably going to be pretty beat up. Um, and, you know, I think that they'll probably more or less be, you know, kind of really searching desperately for a win. Um, you know, if they haven't completely given up on their season at this point. That's just the way that I see it playing out potentially. And then, you know, we've got Georgia. We've got to go to UGA after this week. So this could potentially be sort of a trap game for us. Got to make sure that we're hitting on all cylinders, okay? I fully expect for the offense to be, you know, running in stride at this point, for the defense to really, you know, be finding, you know, finding that swag, uh, you know, playing with a little bit of ump. Um, and, you know, I do expect for Tennessee to win this one, but I think that it could be a little bit closer than the experts think just because it's kind of a trap game, even though it is at home. All right, next game, as we just talked about, November the 16th, we're going to UGA, all right? So Georgia will be coming off of the number eighth ranked offense, number 10th ranked defense in 2023. They will be coming off of playing at Texas. Then they have a bye week, okay? Then they've got Florida and at Ole Miss. And oh, by the way, they also played Alabama early in the season. I think that Georgia could have maybe two, maybe even three losses coming into this week, okay? So you have to ask yourself, what is Sanford Stadium going to be like, uh, you know, if Georgia is not really necessarily competing for, uh, you know, a playoff spot? Now, I do think that for most SEC teams, you can probably lose two games. And Georgia, finally having to play a tough schedule, will be able to lose, I think, at least two games or, you know, maybe at most two games and still be able to make it into the playoffs, um, you know, possibly. So the game could still mean something. But I will tell you this, Georgia fans historically, and, you know, I talk about this a lot, They are like quitters, you know, they are front running cowards and fully expect for them, you know, if Georgia loses to Alabama, if they lose to Texas, if they have a close game versus Ole Miss or if they lose to Ole Miss, I mean, their fan base is going to pretty much be quitting on them, okay? They're going to pretty much implode. That's just how they're set up, especially if Tennessee is playing well, right? Like if Nico's looking like a Heisman candidate, they're going to come into that game with absolutely no confidence. And, you know, you could expect for some of those players to kind of quit. That's just kind of how things go down in Athens. So very excited to see Georgia actually getting a tough schedule for once. We've seen them have very easy schedules for the past two to three seasons. And, uh, you know, they've got two championships out of it. So what do they do? Even though, you know, their team should be a lot better than I think it was in the 2023 season. I just feel like their schedule is so much tougher and they're just not used to having to play up against good teams on a consistent basis. I think that they're going to get out coached, right? Kirby Smart's not a very good coach. 
you know, Sar- uh, Steve Sarkeesian is going to outcoach Kirby. Um, and, you know, I think that obviously Nick Saban is going to outcoach Kirby, especially in Tuscaloosa. And I also think that Lane Kiffin has a pretty good opportunity uh, with probably some good guys in that transfer portal to be able to outcoach Kirby Smart as well. All right, so next two weeks, November the 25th, UTEP is coming to Knoxville. They're coming off with the number 82nd ranked offense and the number 76th ranked defense. I think the Tennessee wins that one. That should be another game that we can get some young guys in uh, early. Like, you know, like I said, we want to continue to build up that depth as much as possible. Then November the 30th, we're going to Vanderbilt. They are coming off of the number 112th ranked offense and number 127th ranked defense. All right, so, you know, this is a game that I definitely also expect for Tennessee to win and win pretty big. I think that we could you know, potentially see some guys coming in early. We don't know how the transfer portal thing is going to shape out completely, but we do know that Vanderbilt has lost a whole lot of talent. And it seems like they're going to be going, you know, taking a step back next season. So, you know, I expect for Tennessee to be rolling that one. Now, overall, it looks like Tennessee has three tough games, okay? It's at Oklahoma, okay? Then we get uh, Alabama coming to Neyland and then at UGA. I don't think that Tennessee will lose all three of those games. Again, this is anticipating that the roster looks like how we talked about to start this segment off. So I think that Tennessee could potentially be a 10 and two team. And I think that that will be good enough to get us into the playoffs next season. And once we get in, anything is possible. So as always, thank y'all so much for tuning in, especially, you know, those of y'all who stuck all the way to the very, very end and watched the entire thing. Uh, You know, y'all are absolutely awesome. Um, Please make sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, share with your friends, family, and other volunteer fans. We will continue to keep y'all up to date as more news comes out, and we'll see y'all on the next one. Thanks. Peace.